Talent Shop in Bath, we're so fortunate to frequently have concert pianist Nuri Lee visit us to review and perform some of her repertoire on our many instruments. All for the benefit of allowing our customers to see and hear selected pianos played by a premier performer. Although Nuri is at the start of her career as a performer, she has nevertheless played internationally and has been through the nerve-wracking experience of preparing for examinations, competitions, master classes and with orchestras. To achieve what is considered by many musicians to be a pinnacle of achievement, we recently invited her to talk about her experience in the process of preparing for these major events. We first asked her about the need to become familiar with a particular piece of music. So before I, um, before I play prepare, while I'm preparing for a concert, um, it's really important for me to be really familiar with the music. So that means playing through the score and listening to many different recordings of the music so that I really internalise the music. We then asked Nuri about preparing for the build-up to a particular concert. So the, before um, playing in a concert, so the build-up to the concert, I would, you know, my hours of practice per day <laughs> would be slightly different, but um, maybe it'll increase as it gets nearer uh, the concert day. I would practice uh, warming up um, and really practice, you know, playing the pieces through. Um, it'll be different types of practice as it gets nearer the concert date as well. So before we be very, very detailed and then as it becomes closer to the concert, I'll take a step back from the piece and look at it as a whole, as a structure. Um, yeah, and then just play through many times to keep the stamina of playing through. And how about the number of hours you would have to commit to practicing? So in terms of hours of practice per day, I think it can range from three hours to about probably maximum seven, eight hours of practice, um, depending on how much preparation you've done. But I think at the start, or, you know, uh, before preparing, before the concert date, I'd do about three hours, four hours um, more detailed work. And then as it gets closer, I'd you know, put in more hours of practice um, to really make sure my fingers are all prepared and I know the piece well enough and I have the energy to play in the concert. You know. When there's no concert coming up, how much practice would you normally give yourself to maintain your level? Oh, that's an interesting question. So if, it's, if I don't have a concert coming up and it's a quiet period, um, in that time, I think I will still do practice, I'll still do warm-ups to keep my technique there. Um, but I'd probably, if I don't have a piece that I need to get ready at a certain, certain point, i would probably do a little bit le of less practice, about three hours, four hours, but I'd play pieces that I want to play, play pieces that I really want to learn, um, play through some old pieces, you know, like really enjoy playing the piano. Can you give us some example of the sort of scales and studies that you might be engaged with? So the sort of things I do for warm-up, so be before, um, the first thing I do every day is these very short one minute exercises where... Is that in any key? It's always in C major for me, for some always reason. Always C major. Always C major. I guess you can do any key. Um, and then, you know, classic, uh, quick Hannon. And then I'd probably do some scales. And depending on how much time I have in the day, um, then I, you know, I can go through all different types of scales, like third, or uh, like sixth, staccato, legato, um, rhythm practice in scales, picking one key and doing scales um, and arpeggios again. Um, 
and broken chords on the on that same key. Or I just if it's if I only have a short time to warm up, then I probably just do these sort of Russian scales, which are. For every key, and it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. But I'll switch it up like do it loud, then soft, then you know, more left hand, right hand rhythms, things like that. And arpeggios are probably. <laughs> Again, going through different keys. So. Well, thanks very much for those demonstrations. How about trills and repetitions? So for trills and repetitions, um, yeah, these, if I, if I had a really tricky passage and there was some trill, trill work that I need to do, then I'd just, I don't, depending on, let's take these two fingers or these two actually, three and four quite weak or four and five, let's say, then I'd get a metronome and just do one, and then, and then. basically just repetition or is, it, is repetition something different? So repeti So this I think it's it's repetition but also strengthening the equality between the fingers and strengthening the fingers and the control of the fingers. So if I'm like controlling uh, the timing, the rhythm and the accents of one, two, three and also the bottom note of the trill and then the top note of the trill um, controlling that. And repetition I think is if I have a passage that I can't do so well, then I, you know, play it slowly or just play it twice through in a row, or three times, or five times, or ten times. And then if you play it once, then it's easier. You know, so ensuring that you get it right the first time. Oh, repetition! Like, oh, is this a piece? My list. It's uh, yeah. It's like repeating it. Um, this, yeah, you, you, we. It depends, <laughs> it changes uh, the action, I think it's really important on each piano <laughs> when you play it. Um, and I think you just hope that the piano you perform on will have, uh, sort of, allows you to have good repetition. But um, you, yeah, again, you practice it. So rather than just playing, for me personally, rather than repeating on the same finger, I like to just change my fingers while repeating on the same note. So if you can do four, three, two, one, or three, two, one, four, two, one. Can you tell us something about preparing for runs? So runs, um, yeah, the runs are interesting. I think f for runs, when I practice runs, I practice them in a similar way as I would for scales. So I'd practice, um, you know, I'd practice in rhythms. Uh, how should I say? Um, in rhythms, I practice staccato. So the same thing. Let's put a path like a scale coming down or something. Um, so there's a run going down there. Then I'd practice in rhythm. And then the other way. And then staccato. And then once very legato, something heavy. And then I'd practice. Um, like more left hand, left hand on its own. Then right hand on its own. And then, um, I don't know, you'd be very creative with the way, breaking up, and then adding each note. Yeah, and then you just speed it up and then you practice playing fast and lighter. <laughs> the trick to playing fast, I think, is playing lighter. They would different touch. Really um, using the sort of touch of the piano to create a sound wave <laughs> that you want. 
You have said before that to become familiarized with a work, that you start by playing slowly and then slowly build up. Right. So if it's um, if I'm learning a new piece, then for me, I don't know, you might listen to it or you might sight read it at the beginning, you know, roughly from beginning to end just to get the, uh, the feeling of the piece. But then once you properly start, then I would really... I take a long time to be very detailed and making sure I'm learning all the correct notes, uh, putting in all the correct fingering. Um, so it's a very slow process and, you know, I, like, is this note correct? Is this playing in the correct octave? Making sure, um, yeah, making sure I learn all the notes correctly and the, the base, the roots of learning the piece is all secure. And from then on, you can, you know, start memorising and then playing faster. Things like can you talk a little about memory? as your performance demands that you memorise orally, visually and physically, pieces that may sometimes exceed 35 minutes. Right, so memorising pieces, yeah. Um, so if it's like a big concerto, uh, like the Tchaikovsky concerto I was trying to memorise uh, recently, that's about a 35 to 40 minute piece. Um, and I think there are different types of memory, you know, mostly it's you know muscle memory, um, where you can sort of rely on but it's not that secure so then go to sort of analytical memory as well so you can analyze the harmony um of and the progressions of of the of the music and then there's oral you need to listen to the music to really internalize it and know how it goes and you can sing it to yourself um and i guess there's i so said there's visual yeah so when you look at the school you can you know whereabouts you are so you can sort of pick that up. But I guess the memory, pro the memorising process, if it's like a romantic piece and it's not, or, you know, a classical piece, it's not too difficult. The harmonies are kind of there. You kind of know, um, your fingers also know where to play. Um, it's not too difficult. Sometimes you, you have to remember, you're like, oh, in this, in this part, there's a, there's a strange note here that you need to you know, actively remember. Oh, there's an F here, there's a B flat here or something like that. Um, but mostly if with your mind and your fingers you you can kind of um memorize it slightly easier but if it's a contemporary piece that, that's quite tricky you just have to memorize each note as it comes sort of yeah. i guess you're thinking of things like bartok yes yeah, bartok ligeti yeah some of these uh, it's very hard to understand um i think the analytical part is very hard to, you know to understand the harmony or uh, the progression as well is this yeah. <laughs> now let's hear and watch Nuri play out with some Bartok and one wonders how she memorises pieces like this. <laughs> 